Okay, this is the final round of the tournament. And really, I just wanted to get it over with and start all over again in the next tournament. But I said I would not withdraw any of my games because I... Apparently I wasn't ready, but I'm ready now. Okay, let's uh, get this one started. Like I said, it was the final round of the tournament. I wasn't playing very well, and I wasn't scoring very well, so I said I would just relax, play this game, get it over with, and enjoy my final evening uh, near Chicago. So I went E4. I pawn played the Sicilian c5, f3, e6. Now the main line of the Sicilian of course goes d4. But I've already played that one time. I said I want to relax and just get this over with. So I played c3. I do not know this opening. I haven't played it or seen it in years. But I played it anyway. He responded right away with d6. So I figured well maybe he knows this line and so be it d4, knight f6, now he kept, uh, he kept responding very quickly, it could be that he was in the same psychological mood that I was in, just wanted to get it over with, now of course after the game I looked up the proper continuation, and I think the way I did wrong was I should have went bishop to d3, later on I have to do it anyway, Instead of bishop e2. He responded bishop e7. Another thing that he probably should not have done. I went h3 because the knight comes here and comes here. What I really want to do is play my bishop to e3. But I didn't want that knight to either be exchanged or force it back away from e3. So I played the h3. Probably a wasted move really. He played a6, so he didn't feel too bad about a3. I know he's going for b4, then put his bishop on the long diagonal. I took the e3. He went b5. Knight d2. Now, I'm feeling kind of cramped, and I really haven't done anything to give myself a square to break through on, either e5 or I'm sorry, either e5 or d5. So I'm going to have problems in the opening. I already realized that. But I'm trying to stay relaxed and just play out the game. Queen c7. I castled. Wasn't too bad. Probably should have played rook to h1 first, but I don't think it makes too much of a difference. Bishop b7. Rook h1. Rook h8. Interesting, we're on move 10 and nothing's been exchanged. No pawns, nothing. So I went b4, which again is a move that I would never make without a really good reason to make it, but I made it anyway. I thought maybe exchange, he takes rook, I take queen, he takes queen, I take rook. I'm not worse off, not much better off, but I'm not worse, mainly because he hasn't castled yet. F6, now you know he's preparing the castle. Bishop D3, and this is what we talked about earlier. I actually wasted a tempo. I could have went straight to D3. He castles. Rook E1. Now I'm trying to break through on either E5 or D5, but it's going to take a while. I'm, I'm fortunate that he didn't make that move earlier. Otherwise, my bishop would have ended up at F1 as opposed to b1. I like b1 because I'm trying to use this diagonal to attack his king if I can lock up this center. Q4. 
queen b8. Now that doesn't look like a very good square for the queen, so I wasn't too unhappy about that. But the queen is on the e5 square that I want to break through at. I want to get rid of this knight because it's actually protecting the king. And my bishop is just in the way, blocking my breakthrough at e5. And now this move, I did not fully analyze. I just wanted to do it, so I did it. And that's a quick way to lose game. So he's attacking my bishop. I'm attacking his knight. I think he takes the bishop off. I'll take his knight off. He'll take with the bishop. Now the knight's no longer protecting the mating square if I play queen to c2, but he does have a block. And now I have to break down that block, and it only cost me a pawn, so I don't think that's too bad. And sure enough, he takes off the bishop. I take off the knight. He takes with the bishop in order to protect his pawn. I think I can get that pawn back if I really wanted it back. So I play the knight here. That puts both these knights on that pawn as well as knight on the bishop. If I end up exchanging here, here. If the bishop takes, then my bishop is posted right in the center board, carrying a lot, covering a lot of territory. Maybe I can get some type of breakthrough at d5 as well. That was a thought. So those exchanges, then I had another thought, which I didn't analyze completely. I said I might be able to attack here. If he pushes up, I can play knight here. The queen ultimately comes over here. I thought I'd have attacking chances. Sure enough, he took it. Now he has another pawn, so he's two pawns up. And my idea here was knight takes, bishop takes, queen attacks here, bishop plays back, checkmate. Of course, that's not going to happen. I attack here, his knight comes over, I take the bishop off. Which would still leave me two pawns down. But now I have also open file that I might be able to swing my rooks over to. I mean, this is a very aggressive type game that if I <laughs> was still in the running to win the tournament, I wouldn't be playing. <laughs> Not in this fashion. And that's exactly what I did. I took the pawn off. Now I'm just one pawn down. But he takes off my knight. I'm a pawn and a bishop down. I threatened the checkmate here, and this I actually did not see because it didn't analyze the position long enough to see it. Bishop takes pawn. That comes with the check. I have to respect the check, so I take the bishop back. Now I'm two pawns down, but he has time to protect his to protect the mating square. And right here, I had a brilliant idea of playing the bishop for the check. Knight takes the bishop off, rook attacks, knight moves out, checkmate. But of course, knight does move out, pawn pushes up. I take the knight, king steps out. I'm still two pawns down, but his king is being forced out of the castle into the center, but I don't have any attacking square, so it's, it looks bad. What actually happened is I saved my queen so that I could play that later. And I want to cover this square. I'm not sure how to do that. But is he want to give himself room? So if I play over, he steps, check, moves over there. I play over. I don't want him to have a chance to regroup his pieces. I want to find some force moves here that will end up being advantageous for me.
Bishop takes knight at e4. I was happy to get rid of that bishop, but, but if you're trying to mate somebody and you're two pawns down, you can't afford to exchange off all your pieces. And that's exactly what it looks like is beginning to happen here. Uh-oh. I missed a couple moves here. The queen had played here and this rook was already played here. Okay. I don't think that's too vital. Same thing happens. Knight takes the bishop. Rook takes the knight. Now, only the major pieces are left, but I'm also two pawns down. He plays his queen over, wanting to exchange off queens. I play the rook over, because I feel that I can get one pawn back. But after check, king moves over, queen takes a pawn. I didn't want this rook coming over, forcing me to exchange off queen. In this case, if the rook comes over, I get my second pawn back. So, what he did not want that to happen. So, in this position, he played pawn f6, which ends up being a serious blunder. And that's what happens in many games. Here, you're okay. There's no tactic to be concerned about. Or there's no tactic that works right away. You have some chances here. It's a bad position. There's a tactic that works right now, and you're probably going to lose the game based on it. So rook takes check. If pawn takes rook back, queen takes check, king steps over, rook checkmate. So he can't allow that to happen. He has to move his king out. Discovered check. Queen is checking the king. King has to move. Lost his queen for a rook. Now that I'm ahead of material, I just want to start exchange off pieces. So I offer the exchange of rook. He, of course, is behind. He can't afford to exchange rook. Check. I step out. I probably could have stepped behind the pawn, but I thought with this pawn here and his pawn here, I get protection from the rooks at both ends. That's what I thought of. Moves here to protect. The attacking square, the rook and the queen, we want both on that square. But now, nothing protects his rook here, nothing protects his pawn here. All I'm concerned about is winning a couple of pawns and then exchanging off the rook. And I, if I have to, give up the queen for a rook. If I'm two, three pawns ahead, I can do that. Queen h5, attacking the rook and attacking the pawn. He doubles up his rooks. I don't have to be afraid of that because the pawn is right here. And there's no, if my king was back here, I might have a little concern, very little. But with the king here and the pawn protecting f3, those rooks aren't going to be able to do anything. I take the pawn, so now I get one pawn. And we are even in pawns, and I'm a queen up, so I need some more pawns. He plays down to f2. He's going to try to grab some pawns and probably move this rook here and bring this rook here and try to see what he can do with the king. But that's all too late. Queen checks there. King has no options. He has to go there. Queen and rook are working together. And any move he makes, the queen is going to be able to checkmate the king on the next move. So at this point, my opponent resigns. So at the end of the tournament, I have one buy, one loss, one draw, and two wins. Okay. Next tournament will be in Ohio in November. Hope to see you there. Bye.